Welcome to our educational video series on clinical practice guidelines for people with diabetes. My name is Candice and I'm from Diabetes Canada. Did you know that Diabetes Canada works with experts to create best practices for diabetes management? In this video, Dr. Harpreet Bajaj will explain what the clinical practice guidelines are, how they are created, why they are important, and how you can use them for your diabetes care. Dr. Bajaj is an endocrinologist and medical director of endocrine and metabolic research at LMC Healthcare and Centricity Research. He is the principal investigator of the Canadian Diabetes Prevention Program, a nationwide collaborative effort between LMC, Diabetes Canada, and the Public Health Agency of Canada. Dr. Bajaj currently serves Diabetes Canada as the chair of the Clinical Practice Guidelines Steering Committee. Over to you, Dr. Bajaj. Hello, everyone. Uh, so thank you, Candice, for that kind introduction, and it's a pleasure to be here uh, talking to you about the Diabetes Canada Clinical Practice Guidelines. So here's an overview of what I'm going to take you through in the next few minutes. Uh, uh, first of all, what are the guidelines and why do we need them is what I'm going to address. Also, uh, not uh, in depth, but I'll show you superficially how the guidelines for Diabetes Canada are created, and then more importantly, how you can use them. Okay, so let's ask the question first, uh, what are clinical practice guidelines? So these are a set of comprehensive evidence-based uh, guidelines, chapters. Uh, what does that mean? That means it, uh, it uh, is a broad way of uh, combining multiple research topics into easy to read chapters or, or topics for the healthcare providers that actually help treat and manage diabetes for people living with diabetes. Um, so these are evidence-based, evidence as in uh, not the legal kind of evidence, but research kind of evidence. Uh, what is the best research out there uh, from any country, not just in Canada, globally, worldwide, that is looked at into various topics. And the topics include uh, what's there for diet, what's there for exercise, what's there for medications, what about pregnancy, what about uh, glucose testing. All of that uh, has, its, has its own chapter and topics that are assigned that are then researched uh, through a library of uh, published research uh, from the highest to the lowest levels. And then we come up uh, with this uh, guidelines. Now you might be thinking, oh, why do we need the guidelines? Uh, just like any other uh, thing, for example, driving. Driving has a guideline that is set, right? Uh, and it should be standardized so that everybody follows the same rules. And so that's kind of the basis of why uh, there are clinical practice guidelines for diabetes. Similar guidelines, for example, uh, are there for many other disease areas as well. For example, cardiology has their own uh, guidelines uh, for how to manage heart problems, or nephrology has guidelines around how to manage blood pressure or kidney problems as well. So then why do we need guidelines for diabetes? Is because these guidelines can inform general diabetes care and kind of standardize them so that uh, each person living with diabetes uh, gets about the same standard of care uh, as their neighbor would, as their next, uh, as the next uh, uh, person in the clinic would as well. Uh, this, of course, is with the whole idea or the background for this is uh, is to try and prevent diabetes and prevent diabetes complications. So that's the goal or the end game for this uh, development of guidelines. What we strive for is to try and prevent the disease from happening. So diabetes uh, from progressing or happening uh, in people who, who, uh, who don't have diabetes at, at that time. Um, there is a lot of research that uh, doing certain things in terms of behavior modification, which could be dietary behavior changes or lifestyle exercise type of behavior changes that people who are at high risk 
diabetes can be prevented using those uh, methods as such. So that's one of the goals. The other is for people living with diabetes, how to prevent complications. Now, diabetes is a silent kind of condition. What I mean is that uh, it does not cause pain or fever, etc. So people may not know about it. And so uh, testing and screening for these complications of diabetes is important. What are the complications, you may ask? Uh, some of the complications of diabetes include eye disease, uh, kidney disease, as well as neuropathy or, or nerve damage mostly happens in the feet in people with diabetes. Uh, those are uh, those three, so the eye disease, kidney disease, and the nerve damage are together called microvascular complications, which mean the small vessels, small blood vessels in the body is what is responsible for those complications. In addition to those microvascular complications, there are macrovascular complications of diabetes, uh, which means the big vessels, and these are the heart blood vessels. So heart attack and stroke are those macrovascular complications. So overall, in a nutshell, these guidelines are developed to help uh, standard of care for people uh, with diabetes or people at risk for diabetes to help their healthcare providers uh, and enhance diabetes prevention, as well as to reduce the burden or development of diabetes complications is the idea behind these guidelines. So the next question you may ask is, how are they created and who is responsible for them? So here's kind of a pictorial or a cartoon of uh, how many uh, committees are involved in development of these guidelines. Um, what I'll tell you is it's, it's, it's a comprehensive process which involves many, many different uh, committees as well as processes. So steps, many different steps are involved in this development. Um, this is to make sure that the maximum number of perspectives from these committee members is gained so that everybody can come to a consensus as to how this should be implemented in the real world in the Canadian uh, uh, healthcare system it's, uh, uh, itself, right? Um, I should also say that most of the committee members, so expert committee who develops the chapters, steering committee who oversees the development of the chapters, as well as the executive committee, um, which, uh, which uh, you know, uh, deals with all the processes and methodology of all of this. All of these experts in these committees are actually volunteers for Diabetes Canada. I'm one of the volunteers, uh, currently I'm the chair of the steering committee, as well as so on the ex executive and expert committee as well. So all these volunteers uh, in these committees, and we are very thankful for their work, are putting in um, volunteer hours into developing these guidelines. They look at uh, uh, what questions need to be answered in each particular topic, and then uh, set out parameters for searching those topics in the research literature, lit research publications that have been already published, and then uh, look at the literature, look at the search results that we get, and then finally uh, come up with what the recommendations should be for the end user, the healthcare provider, who has to help the person living with diabetes. On the sides of this uh, figure, you can see the other um, committees or other people that may be involved in development of this. This includes external reviewers, which means people who are not involved in developing those chapters, but external, maybe experts, uh, could be national or international, and actually look at these uh, guideline recommendations finally and say, yes, this makes sense, or maybe you should consider changing this or that. And then there's also the independent methods committee looking to make sure that the right processes were done, that the right uh, citations were done, and make sure that the, the evidence from the research is marked at the right level of evidence or grading as well. And then uh, there's the Diabetes Canada support staff who are very, very important in making sure that all of this uh, is, is completed in a timely fashion. 
And then finally, we have the Dissemination and Implementation Committee. It's one thing to come up with a chapter, but it's another to disseminate it across Canada, across uh, the provinces, uh, uh, from east to west to the north uh, as well. And so that's the uh, kind of the work that Dissemination and Implementation Committee uh, engages with. Uh, this could be online education, it could be in print education uh, to the healthcare provider, etc. as well. So what I mentioned until now to you is what is relevant uh, in terms of creation of guidelines and how maybe healthcare providers uh, get to see these guidelines and use it as well. So now that you've learned uh, what the guidelines are and how they're created, and how they help uh, the healthcare provider, let's talk about how you, as a person with diabetes or, or a relative of a person with diabetes, could use these clinical practice guidelines. I think these uh, guidelines would be important to increase your knowledge about diabetes prevention, diabetes treatment, as well as care in general. You know, there is a lot of information that is available online, and some of it is good and some of it is unfortunately not so good what i mean is it may not be uh, may not be accurate information or sometimes unfortunately it can be even misleading information as well so that's why you need a resource that you can actually rely on and diabetes canada overall uh, uh, on online uh, information that uh, diabetes canada provides as well as the clinical practice guidelines is something that you can rely on to uh, get that information. And this uh, may serve the purpose of raising your awareness of the guidelines, uh, as well as you, know, you can discuss, uh, and maybe this may spark a conversation with your healthcare team about certain aspects of your care. Um, you know, there, hopefully, uh, the healthcare team that you're dealing with is uh, aware uh, of, the, of the most recent guidelines as well, and they're following them as well. So when um, you converse with them or you communicate with them in terms of uh, those guideline uh, recommendations, uh, then it might actually uh, you know, uh, work better as a team so that, uh, uh, so that uh, the team uh, that you're dealing with helps with your care even more in a team environment together. And of course, uh, this may also help you speak up and advocate for your care if uh, those uh, recommendations uh, you think are not being applied to the right uh, uh, degree as such, so you can maybe advocate for yourself. Uh, at the same time, you know, we have to also realize that uh, the recommendations are recommendations. And just like any guideline, uh, there are guidance documents um, and each treatment or management has to be individualized to the person that we are dealing with as well in the clinic. Uh, for example, you know, uh, I might be seeing a person with diabetes and the next person I see with diabetes may have a different, completely, completely different situation as such. And I might have to tailor that based on my experience uh, in terms of diabetes management as well. So, uh, yes, there are guidelines recommended for uh, standardization of care, but then there's an element of individualization, uh, which means that each individual is treated according to their circumstances, according to uh, various uh, medical uh, diagnoses and, and uh, availability and access uh, as well. Where do you find all this information? Um, so here's a great uh, resource. So, so Diabetes Canada online, uh, the website, but also if you search for the guidelines themselves uh, within the Diabetes Canada, uh, Diabetes Canada website, you'll find that uh, the guidelines are listed. Now, most of this is listed uh, as, uh, as full guidelines or guideline chapters, each of them you can go through, and they have a special uh, kind of a box or, or at the top of each chapter, there are key messages for people with diabetes that you can go through. And those key messages in each chapter um, you know, it, it uh, may or may not apply to each of the situations. So you can select which chapters may apply to you and then go through the key messages uh, itself as well. Also uh, of interest, uh, maybe at the bottom, the circle, the uh, lower green circle that you 
see around here on the left side, uh, there, are, there are good handouts or videos or tip sheets that you may find uh, that, that might be useful for you uh, to understand further uh, basics into your diabetes uh, management as well. So I would encourage you to explore the education video library uh, that is available through Diabetes Canada website and all these tools that are available to you uh, at your fingertips uh, if, if you choose to. Uh, the website is mentioned at the bottom, the guidelines.diabetes.ca is the website for the guidelines and diabetes.ca is the website overall for Diabetes Canada as such. So with that, I just uh, summarize and say that the bottom line is the guidelines are comprehensive. They're developed by volunteers who are experts in that field, and they're based on research evidence. And they're based on that so as to make it pragmatic or practical for the Canadian uh, healthcare structure that we have. And this uh, may enhance uh, your treatment plan but then your treatment plan has to be tailored to you and to your values as well as preferences uh, that you have as well. I think it's important that uh, the whole team, including yourself as the most important part of the team, as well as the whole healthcare team is on the same page when we are talking about what's best, what's best uh, management in terms of uh, diabetes care for you. So I hope uh, you'll, you Use this to support, assist, and guide in terms of your management. Good luck to all of you. Um, uh, thank you for your attention.